Night Beat starts right now. We begin tonight with breaking news. A portion of I-10 in East Bear County closed tonight after a tanker carrying flammable liquid overturns. Our Lee Waldman is live near the crash site. Lee, how long could this closure last? Tim Courtney, this closure, SAPD tells us, could last anywhere from 15 to 18 hours, but it's really those westbound lanes. If we take a look, you're seeing that backup really being impacted. Eastbound lanes still have traffic moving along. Those westbound drivers being redirected to the frontage road. Now, you said all of this caused by an overturned tanker truck. Now, SAPD tells us the portion of I-10 from 1604 to Greytown Road will be open until that hazmat team gets here. Now, they haven't given us an estimate on when that team will arrive, both, but when they do, both eastbound and westbound lanes will be shut down so they can clear things properly. The truck that overturned was carrying flammable liquid that spilled. San Antonio Fire Department tells us there was a small leak of cleaning product that was then stopped. Now, those westbound drivers, when they get onto the frontage road, they're turning left and right to get around that closure, trying to redirect their own traffic there. We left a message this evening with TxDOT and we haven't heard back just yet. Now, with any new developments, we'll be sure to keep you up to date. Reporting live on the east side, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Definitely check in on that story before you head out in the morning. Developing tonight, fishermen make a disturbing discovery in the San Pedro Creek. Police say a badly decomposed body was found near West Mitchell Street in Flato. That's south of downtown. When crews pulled the body out of the creek, it was unclear if the body was that of a man or a woman. The Bear County Medical Examiner now trying to identify that body. Meanwhile, homicide investigators also looking for clues in that case. Now to a new look at the man who kept law enforcement and an entire apartment complex in a standoff for over three days. People living at a Stone Oak apartment complex will finally be able to sleep in their own bed tonight. After a 76 hour standoff ended peacefully early this morning, we've been following this story since Thursday. Now the night team's Camelia Juarez shows us brand new video of the man who is now in custody. It's a quick shot of a man being walked through an apartment complex in handcuffs. Of all buildings, our building, and then of all units, the one right above us was kind of just, you know, surreal, I guess, and frustrating. This man, Tyler, caught the shot on his ring doorbell camera. For safety reasons, he didn't want to give us his last name. Turns out the man arrested in the apartment above him was wanted for murder. Wednesday night, San Antonio police say a tip led them to the apartment where Sonny Quintero Rojas was located. Police confirmed he was wanted in the death of a man in Cuero, about 90 miles east of San Antonio. When the standoff first began, he had a hostage who he eventually released unharmed, also caught on Tyler's ring camera. Police spent nearly four days calling on Rojas to surrender. Meanwhile, people like Tyler were forced to sleep elsewhere. He and his wife were able to stay with his parents, but others had to pay for hotel rooms. The officer had told her to pack for like a day, and then it, obviously this ended up being about three or four days, whatever it was. So it was it was difficult to deal with that, not be able to come home, just that feeling of not not having your home to go home to. Over the days long standoff, Rojas was seen throwing items from his barricaded room. Act like a 42 year old man would. But once in my life, I'm going to act my age. I'm not going to be a little child hiding from my problems. But just before three this morning, Rojas peacefully surrendered and was taken into custody. Tyler is relieved it's over. I'm glad he's gone now and I'm a, a little bit pissed off that he wasted everybody's time for that long. Rojas is booked at the Bear County Jail on four charges tonight, including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, parole violation, property theft, and murder. At some point, Rojas will have to be transferred to DeWitt County to face those charges. And when we find that out, we'll let you know. And as for everybody who lives at the Agora Apartments, they should be at their home tonight, um, hopefully watching the newscast. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Well, another gathering, gathering was held today at the site where 53 migrants died in the back of a hot 18-wheeler more than a month ago. One artist painted the Statue of Liberty that combined the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe as a call to action for immigration reform. 
Organizers say today's event also invited the victims' families to call in and share their stories with visitors over the phone. This is an opportunity for them to talk. It's part of their coping skill to tell the world what happened and humanizing them as well. And looking ahead to tomorrow, a local town hall will be held to discuss immigration. Sheriff Javier Salazar will be hosting the event along with several other panelists at the downtown UTSA campus. The town hall starts at 7. There is a no bag policy in place. Well, it's a bit windy out there tonight and warm. Temperatures are in the 80s. Some folks saw some rain today, but most of us missed out, unfortunately, on the isolated showers and storms. Hey, we'll take the little victories where we can get them. One is that we didn't reach 100 today. Today, the high temperature was 99 uh, out in San Antonio International Airport, two degrees above the average. Elsewhere, we got up to 101 in Del Rio, 106 in Catula, 102 in Pleasanton, and it was 97 in Kerrville. A lot of kids heading back to school tomorrow. Here's a look at your bus stop forecast. Dropping the kids off, it'll be in the upper 70s, humid and warm, picking them up 99 degrees, 10% chance for a stray shower. I'll show you that future cast and we'll talk about the tropics coming up in the forecast. Summer is over, it's back to school, bus stop forecast is back. New on the night beat, the San Antonio Fire Department has many tools at its disposal to help them fight fires and save lives. A new addition to the arson detection squad is helping to speed up their investigations. This story might have you saying no, 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 but the night team's Lee Waldman says it's time to talk about Bruno. We're used to seeing them, firefighters jumping off their rigs, springing into action, fighting fires. What you don't normally see, the Arson Bureau. We'll be able to do firefighting and the possibility of doing law enforcement as well, and then marry that with possibly the canine deal. That It was just uh, um, a dream for me. Romero and other investigators work to determine if fires were set intentionally. A tough job, if it weren't for him. I don't know, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. The two-year-old lab mix, boy. Bruno, is an ignitable liquid boy. detection canine. Diesel to gasoline to Coleman fuel to lamp oil, um, uh, anything that can be used um, it, it to uh, start a fire. We Collect put his sniffer to the test. Place a little bit of this ignitable liquid here near the steps. And let Bruno Upward. get to work. Within a matter of seconds, Bruno gave the sign, wagging tail and laying down. He found the gasoline. That's a good boy, Bruno. Good boy. Good boy. He gives us a, a really good direction in, um, uh, as to where we need to look and where we need to start pulling um, uh, evidence, um, samples and uh, to send off uh, to get analysis uh, done. Bruno's highly trained nose helps speed up investigators' jobs when it comes to finding the evidence they need to prove a fire was arson. He's just another tool to add and put all that stuff together to build a successful case. Romero says Bruno is the best partner he's worked yeah, alongside. Job, His boy. kids think good so boy. too. So They're the ones who praise. named him. My kids um, at the time had been watching Encanto pretty pretty often, uh, several times a day, and uh, and Bruno came up. They, they ask about him all the time. They want to know if he's uh, how he's doing and if he's doing his job. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Fire incident. See, we should talk about Bruno. Mm -hmm. Bruno oh is the department's third ignitable liquid detection canine. The other two pictured here are Kai and Jenna. Kai has since passed and Jenna will retire soon. Bruno is also unique because he's the first play reward dog for SAFD. The other two were food reward dogs. A busy day out at the new Techport Center. Three of the top five professional gaming teams in the country used the facility to compete in a qualifier event today. The stakes are high, $125,000 up for grabs at that event. Organizers say the equipment in the Techport Center gives them a special advantage. With this big, uh, the amount of prize money on the line this weekend, a lot of teams decided to travel down to Texas to just try to make sure they have the you know best setup for success. Now the winners of today's session move closer to a spot in a world championship game. Well, believe it or not, students are returning to the classroom. So the silver and black stepped in inviting parents, students and teachers to the AT&T Center today to get free school supplies, health screenings and vaccines. I've heard a few comments about it. Some of the kiddos first time in the AT&T Center. And so that's really exciting. 
Over 60 vendors were at the event. Organizers say it was planned as a one-time event, but they aren't ruling out the possibility of doing it again. And just a reminder, tomorrow we are helping you prepare for the start of the new school year. The superintendent of SAISD, Dr. Jaime Aquino, will be joining us live for a Q&A during our noon newscast on Monday. That's tomorrow. He'll be talking about dress codes, school lunches, and so much more. And tomorrow is actually the first day back for some students. Yeah, South San ISD, Jordanton ISD, and Edgewood ISD all begin classes in the morning. Those kids better be asleep right now. I hope so. <laughs> Other school districts in our area also begin throughout the week and into next week. KSAT will, of course, have team coverage and everything you need to know as students head back to school bright and early on GMSA. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huertas tells us about one local school district that's helping refugee students with resources and support. She'll explain the big impact it's having for those students. Still ahead on the night beat, more than 300 Haitian migrants in Border Patrol custody tonight after a smuggling operation goes terribly wrong off the coast of Florida. Plus, unapproved ice for sale and roaches in the kitchen. Just a few of the issues I found at local San Antonio restaurants when I went behind the kitchen door. The details coming up. Plus, the Senate passing a massive bill today. We'll tell you what it includes and what happens next. Well, the U.S. dollar is up more than 10 percent near its highest level in two decades. And while that's great news for American tourists traveling overseas, it's causing debt problems for emerging economies. The International Monetary Fund estimates that 60 percent of lower income countries are at high risk of debt default. Experts say that could lead to a global recession. And a live look at the nation's capital tonight. The U.S. Senate working overnight and throughout the day today, holding a series of amendment votes. As Cole Higgins reports, lawmakers are inching closer to the final passage of the Democrats' sweeping health care, climate, and tax bill. The Senate being equally divided, the vice president votes in the affirmative, and the bill, as amended, is passed. The U.S. Senate passing a $750 billion health and energy bill Sunday with the help of tie-breaking Vice President Kamala Harris, but not before a voterama that kicked off on the Senate floor late Saturday night. I ask unanimous consent that all remaining time on the bill be yielded back, that there be two minutes for debate equally divided prior to each vote with respect to the reconciliation bill. The Senate taking a series of back-to-back -back amendment votes in the marathon event, a necessary step to be able to hold a final vote on what Democrats are calling the Inflation Reduction Act. I don't believe this new bill is going to lower inflation. That's where I'm at. Republicans using the voterama to put Democrats on the spot and forcing politically tough votes. Not having voted in the affirmative, the motion is not agreed to. The point of order is sustained and the language will be stricken from the amendment. A provision that would have limited insulin prices to $35 per month on the private insurance market was struck from the bill after Republicans raised a point of order, resulting in a vote to strip it out. The $35 per month cap remains in place for Medicare beneficiaries. The bill also includes Medicare power to negotiate some drug prices, caps Medicare out-of-pocket costs for prescription drugs at $2,000, extends Affordable Care Act subsidies for three years, and includes $360. $69 billion to combat climate change. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Now that the legislation is passed in the Senate, it now heads to the House of Representatives. Lawmakers in the House are set to return to Capitol Hill to take up the legislation this Friday. Back here closer to home, let's get you an update now on those wildfires that we've been following since last week. The Big Sky Fire north of Fredericksburg now 90% contained tonight. Those flames had spread to more than 1,200 acres. Another fire straddling the Blanco and Hayes County line is also 90% contained. That's the Skyrider Fire. Emergency crews say thunderstorms over the area helped and they hope to reach 100% containment sometime tonight. Meanwhile, crews say they are in the middle of mopping up. They are putting out burning debris along or near the fire control line. That might include a thermal imager to help locate hidden hot spots. Firefighters also use a method called cold trailing. It's when a firefighter uses the back of their hand to feel along the ground near the fire line to make sure no heat remains. Firefighters say the slow and tedious work is very important to make sure those wildfires are out completely. 
Yeah, and those fires are scary when the ground is so dry. We really know what that's like here, though, Sarah, oh, especially this year. Absolutely. Yeah, in those pictures of those firefighters doing that cold mapping, you could see just how brown, brown and dry the vegetation is. Look at this. Okay, this year so far, up to date, has been the driest year on record for us in San Antonio. And records go all the way back to 1886. Some notable years on here too, 2011, and the big drought of the 50s, as well as a big drought in the late 90s too. We have seen just over five inches of rain. On average, by this time this year, we should have more than 18 inches of rain, more than a foot and a half. And we don't even have half a foot of rain in the rain gauge for the year so far. So yes, as Courtney was saying, it is very dry out there. We did see some rain today, uh, but it really wasn't all that much. Some isolated showers and storms. Here's a look at the 24 hour rainfall estimates around San Antonio. It was pretty dry. Uh, there were some showers on the south Southeast side of town, out to, along I-10, uh, toward Seguin, and small amount of rain over Medina Lake area. Uh, as far as rainfall estimates go, maybe about a tenth to two tenths of an inch of rain out near Calaveras Lake. Meanwhile, though, you know, Wilson County saw some decent rain, especially near Sutherland Springs, about half an inch of radar estimated rainfall. And up in Guadalupe County, Seguin saw just shy of about a tenth of an inch of rainfall. The, the streaking nature of this rain is really unfortunately not going to help us out in the drought, but Kerrville won out today too. Kerrville saw about maybe half an inch of rain in spots between Kerrville and Guadalupe Heights up there in Kerr County. Uh, tomorrow, you know, our rain chance is only 10%. You're going to wake up. It's going to be 77 degrees in the morning, very humid, uh, warm and uh, throughout the first part of the day, 89 degrees and then 99 for the forecast high. So it will be hot, overwhelmingly so. It's going to be a hot day day tomorrow. But as we take a look at the future cast, you can see that a couple of coastal showers are possible, but uh, really the chance for rain in San Antonio is only about 10%. You can see that in the high res future cast during the peak heat of the day between three to seven potential for a stray shower, but more than likely it's just going to be a hot day. Here's a look at the rain chances again, 10% along I-35 and around San Antonio, closer to the coast, up to about 20%. That's about it. Otherwise, it's going to be hot. 102 in Del Rio, 100 in Uvalde, 100 in Hondo, 100 in Pleasanton. 98 in Canyon Lake, 99 in San Antonio and around the metro area with a little bit of extra cloud cover. We may be able to see temperatures just stay shy of 100 again tomorrow. That's why we're forecasting 99 up in the hill country. It'll be slightly more comfortable mid to upper 90s elsewhere. 100 in Hondo, 98 in Floresville. Satellite and radar, you know, the high pressure system, which brought us the record heat through July, has really weakened quite a bit. It's currently over the Four Corners region, so that means that we will have a small opportunity for rain this week, especially by about Thursday. Without the direct influence of that heat high directly overhead, I think we'll get a piece of energy Thursday that'll allow for some isolated showers and storms. 30% chance for rain just ain't going to cut it, though, when it comes to the drought. We could really use some tropical moisture and there is something to see out in the Atlantic right now for the first time since early July. An area of disturbed uh, thunderstorms out near the coast of Africa has about a 40% chance of development in the Atlantic. All indications are though that this is not going to impact the Texas coast. We'll keep you updated. Here's a look at your next seven days. Again, the big story is we'll be hot, but we won't be as hot as we possibly could be. Temperatures will be at or just below 100. We'll be keeping an eye on Thursday. Thursday, hopefully bumping up those rain chances if, if that's what the forecasting models tells us. And coming up, I've got some wonderful pictures from you, our viewers, of what I like to call teaser clouds. Clouds that wanted to rain but just didn't. <laughs> Just make us cry instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. All right, we're visiting with Greg Simmons out in Oxnard, California, right after this. Cowboys franchise quarterback Dak Prescott sits down with KSAT 12 Sports at the Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard with more of what's on instant replay tonight. Let's check in with our Greg Simmons in California. 
Yeah, we're kind of sad because this is our last night, Tim, covering the Dallas Cowboys training camp in California. We're coming to you from the Channel Islands Harbor Marina on our final night here. And what a night because we go one-on-one -on -one with Dak Prescott. This is a very special evening because this is an interview where there are no holes barred. Everything is up for grabs in our sit-down interview. No injuries, no restrictions. Uh, I just get to focus on re what really matters, and that's my teammates. That's who's coming out here trying to be the best each and every day with these guys. About to start his seventh season in the NFL, what vision does the starting quarterback the world's biggest sports franchise have to say about the coming season? How did he and his teammates recover from that frustrating first-round loss to the 49ers last season? Find out tonight as we go one-on-one -on -one with Dak Prescott. I'll say there's not anything uh, extra that I do during one month or anything uh, to get it ready. All right, after suffering a nagging knee injury that limited his burst in the last three months of the offseason, does Cowboys star running back Ezekiel Elliott have to adjust his pregame preparations coming into this season? It is very exciting, especially, you know, especially knowing the team they have. Obviously, we need to come together and put the work in together at the same time for make a team like us to win. It's not going to be easy, so we hopefully we can put the work out there and make it happen. All right, look who's in San Antonio this weekend. Padre star Fernando Tatis Jr. returning to the missions for his rehab assignment after surgery on his left wrist, getting himself ready for the end of the season push and the playoffs. Also, when we come back, what about San Antonio FC after a tough loss? Where do they stand right now in the USL standings? And, of course, you get to decide what is the biggest concern in Cowboys camp tonight. You decide on Instant Replay, which is live from California and Texas after the night beat. I've got one question, Greg. Where are the seals? Oh, they're they they're napping and okay. they're on the other side. They're All not right. our audience tonight. All right. They're very Thank upset you. with us about that. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Still ahead on the night beat, over 300 Haitian migrants in police custody tonight. Details on their failed smuggling operation. Plus, if you're noticing your doors and windows aren't quite closing properly, the South Texas heat could be to blame. Tips on identifying foundation problems. But first, tragic new details out of Houston tonight about a deadly crash involving a golf cart. That's next. New on the night beat, a crash between an SUV and a golf cart ends with two children and two adults dead. It all happened in Galveston overnight. Police say 45 year old Miguel Espinoza ran a traffic light and then slammed into the golf cart. Espinoza is accused of driving drunk. Both he and a passenger in his car survived the crash with only minor injuries. New video tonight, more than 300 Haitian migrants piled onto a sailboat when things go horribly wrong in the Florida Keys. As Danielle Garcia reports, Customs and Border Patrol agents believe it was a part of a major human smuggling operation. Through the heat and rough seas, more than 300 Haitian migrants tried to come ashore, but instead had to be rescued at sea. You can see in this video just how close they got on their sailboat to the Ocean Reef Club in Key Largo. Kyler Brown took the video, the juxtaposition not lost on him as he watched with his two sons. And then all of a sudden there we got some people on the speaker saying, Everyone needs to clear the beach, everyone out. We're an ocean reef, which is pretty nice, and you just got to wonder what the cultural shock must be when they, they land ashore and they see all the amenities that we have here, and you really feel horrible for the people that are trying to go through that. You can only imagine what atrocities that they're facing back home were. Seven Sky Force Above shows the Coast Guard and Border Patrol working together to bring those migrants to safety. Four people even had to be transferred to a hospital for dehydration. There were young children and women, but mostly adult men. It, you know, with over 300 migrants on board a vessel, uh, they were extremely dehydrated, uh, very dangerous conditions. They were uh, overcrowded. They did not have, they had limited water, uh, no life vests. Um, so we had EMS on scene a lot. About 200 migrants were transferred to a Coast Guard cutter where they will be repatriated. And 113 swam to shore, jumping into the choppy water without life vests where they had to be rescued. We saw Border Patrol buses leaving the gated community with those migrants who made it to land, taking them to a facility where they will be interviewed and processed. This is at least the third time this year that migrants have been intercepted off the coast of Ocean Reef Club. Border Patrol says Saturday's incident was part of a larger smuggling operation. So in the interview process, uh, we were able to identify two suspected smugglers involved uh, with this event. 
Uh, we will partner with our uh, Department of Homeland Security investigations and attempt to prosecute any individuals in any of these cases. Well, as Tim was saying earlier, it's hard to believe it's time to bring back the bus stop forecast graphic, but it is time. Temperatures will be in the 70s as you drop the kids off early tomorrow morning. It's going to be a humid one. We'll be looking at temperatures in the upper 70s, picking up the kids in the afternoon, 99 degrees, 10% chance for a stray shower or storm, but another day tomorrow where I'm sure there will be some of those teaser clouds outside that uh, look like they want to rain, but just don't. Coming up, I've got a look at some of your pictures that you submitted through our KSAC Connect uh, app on our weather app, and I'll tell you which areas have the best chance for rain in the coming days. Not going to be as hot as you may think so, too. Courtney. Well, that's some good news. Not so good news here. Live roaches in the kitchen and unapproved ice for sale. These are just a few of the violations topping the list of recent restaurant inspections. Here's behind the kitchen door. First stop this week is the Picnic Foods located in the 500 block of Ruiz Street. 11 repeat violations helping bring down their score to a 73. The health inspector found improperly labeled bags of ice for sale. They were bagging up the unapproved ice on site without the proper license. A microwave that was rusted on the inside was taken out of service and replaced. There were live roaches in the kitchen and the ceiling tiles above the kitchen were peeling paint. Maria's Cafe, number one in the 1400 block of Couples Road, earned a 75 on their recent inspection. When the inspector visited on July 1st, they found a bin of prepared chicken with a use-by date of June 24th. The chicken was thrown out. There was old food debris, including a foil-wrapped taco on the floor behind the cook's cold unit. A container of sugar was being stored on the floor, and an employee was seen touching customers' prepared tacos with bare hands. 11 violations were corrected during the inspection. <laughs> Finally, Cafe San Luis, located in the 1600 block of Castroville Road, scored an 82. Meat was discovered thawing in a sink at room temperature. It was showing a temp of 68. Coffee creamer that should have been refrigerated was temped at 67. Both items should be 41 degrees or less. Food in a freezer was stored under a fan that was leaking fluid onto that food. There were also ice stalactites forming on the shelves. Staff corrected seven violations during their inspection. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. That's me. And if you'd like to see more, we have dozens of behind the kitchen door stories on KSAT.com just waiting for you. I know him. Yeah, we've got some news coming up on that in the coming days here, hopefully. All some right. New stuff on we'll BKD. We'll look forward to it. All right, foundation problems can be devastating to your home. Still ahead, how to identify them and what it takes to get them fixed. But first, if you're forgetting things more often, I do all the time. The <laughs> CDC has some tips that could improve your memory. You said it, I didn't. <laughs> Tim, are you listening? I am. Losing keys and forgetting names doesn't have to be a part of getting older. No, it doesn't. With many Americans <laughs> concerned about uh, memory issues, the CDC is providing guidance on many ways to improve your brain health. With more, here's ABC's M. Wen. It's common to see some mental hiccups with age, but research has shown that 40% of Alzheimer's and related dementias could be delayed or even prevented. Here are some helpful tips that you could do to reduce your risk and slow its progression. The CDC recommends remaining active and maintaining a healthy weight. For those with diabetes, be sure to keep track of and manage your blood sugars. Make sure to get that blood pressure under control if it's too high. Talk to a professional about preventing and correcting hearing loss, find support if you're feeling depressed or blue, and lastly, make sure to limit those alcoholic drinks and avoid smoking. The effects of aging are a natural part of life, but these lifestyle habits may help keep your brain healthy. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. Well, the South Texas heat can damage just about anything that's in it for too long, including your home's foundation. Tips on how to prevent damage next. While the drought is pushing all of us to the brink, it's also hurting the foundation of your home. Yeah, the night team's Patty Santos talks to a foundation specialist to find out how to avoid trouble.
The heat may be causing a shift under your feet and all around your home. That's a pretty severe crack right there. That is absolutely a pretty severe crack. I mean, it goes from top to bottom, so that's that's probably been some long-term movement that more than likely wasn't addressed. Paul White with Foundation Support Specialist says his company has answered 1,000 more calls this year so far than last year. The biggest um, problem with foundations is, is the, the retraction of the clay soil. Cracks near the windows, tiles, and even separating door frames and floors are all examples of what homeowners are seeing. Ignoring it, could cost you more, he says. Your house is sitting on something that is possibly moving. And so if if you just pay attention to your house, pay attention to the to the outside of the walls, um, and, and it, it's gonna speak to you and tell you exactly what's going on. Brad Harrell with Harrell Commercial Plumbing says there's other problems that could follow. So you have slabs shifting, and um, then you have drain pipes that will break and then you'll have sewage going underneath the house, which is another main issue in and around this area. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And just to keep in mind, companies are offering free inspections and free estimates, so it's probably a good idea to get multiple bids for a foundation inspection. Yeah, experts say it's best to do it early because putting that off will just cost you more, and we know how hot it is right now. So hot, and we continue. It's now August, but we've had a couple days here in a row where we didn't hit 100. I know it's kind of a mental thing, but yeah. maybe this is a new trend? Well, the trend is definitely that we will not be dealing with record heat this week, and so that's some good news there. And one of the reasons why is because we'll have some isolated showers here and there, a little bit of extra cloud cover. Here's some of your pictures that you submitted into our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. A lot of people saw this beautiful cloud formation look like the end of a rain shower as that was falling apart. Thank you, Skywatcher, for that. And then this one was in Lake Hills. So it's interesting how in one part of San Antonio you can see that sky formation. And then on the northwest side of town, you can see the same one. This was in San Antonio. Unfortunately, she says beautiful cloud formation but no rain from this cloud, unfortunately. That was a big picture for a lot of folks out there, seeing those clouds out there, but not really getting any showers. And if you did, you won the rainfall lottery for the day today. 99 degrees was the high temperature. Again, we were nowhere close to that record set back in 2013 of 104, and that's going to be a trend we'll continue to see in the coming days. Outside right now, it's not too bad out there. It's in the upper 80s, and it's a bit windy too. We're seeing gusts of up to 26 to 30 miles per hour out there right now. That wind is going to bring back in the humidity in the overnight hours. And so as you start the day tomorrow, it is going to be noticeably humid. Here's a look at the high rest future cast. Most of the rain tomorrow will be focused along the coast. Sea breeze showers. That sea breeze may allow for one or two to reach that I-35 corridor between about 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. tomorrow, but rain chances are not good, even less than the last couple of days for us. Maybe about a 10% rain chance around San Antonio. But again, because we'll have a little bit of extra cloud cover, those temperatures should be just below 100. 99 for the forecast high in San Antonio, 95 in Bulverde, 99 New Braunfels and in Seguin. It'll be 98 in Floresville, 100 in Divine, 100 in Pleasanton, 100 in Uvalde, 97 in Kerrville and in Comfort. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast again, a warm morning, 77 early in the morning as you're heading out for your morning commute. You, we're going to see some clouds through about 10 and then in the afternoon, partly cloudy skies, 89 at lunch, 10% chance for a stray shower or storm winds will be from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour, 99 for the forecast high. All right, on the satellite and radar, we've been talking about how that heat high is just not going to be as much of an influence on our weather in a very direct way over the coming days. And so this is the good news of the forecast. Is it going to be hot? Yes. Is it going to be record heat out there? No, it is not. In fact, look at the highs over the coming days at or just below 100 through the weekend. Records are anywhere from 104 to 106, so we won't be taking the record for any day over the next seven days. And even notice that by Thursday, 97 only for the high temperature. And that's because we're really eyeing Thursday for our best chance for rain in the coming days. It is only 30% chance for showers and storms, so isolated at best. Chances there, again, we are off to the driest start to the year we have seen 
since records have been taken on this statistic since 1886. So it is not just you, it is hotter than average and it is drier, much drier, much hotter than average as well. Tomorrow, 99 for the high again, 10% coastal shower. We'll probably add to that triple digit tally at least a couple of days over the next seven days, uh, likely surpassing 2009 for the greatest amount of 100 degree days in a year by this time next weekend. So. Again, we're going for the gold there when it comes <laughs> to the triple digit temperatures, and at least it won't be as unbearably hot out there this week. Fingers and toes crossed for rain. Best of luck to everyone on Thursday. <laughs> All aboard the bullet train, a look at the new big action movie that sped into theaters this weekend and the competition. Minions The Rise of Gru is up to 335 million domestic after a fifth place weekend worth 7.1 million dollars. Thor Love and Thunder fell to fourth, grossing 7.6 million dollars for a domestic total of 316 million. Nope slid to third, nearing the 100 million mark with an eight and a half million dollar weekend. <laughs> Look who's alive! Well, let's correct that at the lower side, shall we? DC League of Super Pets only managed one week on top, dropping to second on ticket sales of $11.2 million. Hi, there's a gun on Shh, well, it's the quiet car. There was no stopping Bullet Train. Brad Pitt stars in the action comedy, which roared to victory in its opening weekend, earning $30.1 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Dallas defensive star Micah Parsons on what drives him after his unbelievable rookie season. And after tying for their worst loss of the season, where does San Antonio FC rank in the United Soccer League standings? To find out what else is on Instant Replay, let's head to Greg Simmons in Oxnard, California. Yeah, and we're actually coming to you from the Channel Islands Harbor Marina on our last night in Cowboys camp. We're very sad about that. But also San Antonio, of course, don't forget, it's the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The countdown begins tonight. We're less than a month away. So coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay live from California and Texas. My personal of what I want to do for my family and this team and what I know I can accomplish for my abilities, that's what drives me. Cowboys, Cowboys defensive end slash linebacker Micah Parsons about the most competitive person you will ever find, not just on the football field, also with his family just playing games. He does not take losing well. So what drives him to top what he was able to do in his rookie season last year? You will find out tonight. Plus, our Andrew Seeley checks in on the Texans training camp in Houston. He's different now. He's a different athlete. He's there's a slippery. He's slippery, man. He's uh, he's I call him the praying mantis. Some San Antonio stars are impressing in camp, including John Jay grad Josh Reynolds with the Lions and Justin grad to Marvin Leal with the Steelers And San Antonio FC was missing one of their key players in their three nil loss to San Diego tying for their worst loss of the season. But how does that affect SAFC's ranking in the latest United Soccer League standings? Andrew City will share that with us back in San Antonio. All that plus our one on one interview with star quarterback Dak Prescott. No restrictions apply and the high school volleyball season is about to tip off tomorrow. Andrew City with that as well. Instant Replay is live from California and Texas and it is next. Really big show coming our way. Thank you, Greg, and safe travels to you and the crew as you come back tomorrow. They're not excited about it. I bet they're not. <laughs> we'll be right back. Finally tonight, let's wrap this up by telling you something good. The Seattle Mariners have a new team member and an unofficial mascot. Meet Tucker, a four-year-old Labrador Retriever mix who the Mariners saved from euthanasia. The team wanted to remind Seattle baseball fans that there's a huge population of animals who need forever homes. In all likelihood, Tucker won't be retrieving any foul balls, but he's up for snuggling with the fans and his new teammates at T-Mobile Park. And of course, Tucker has an official Twitter handle. It's Mariners at Mariners Pup. Well, welcome to him. Yeah. You know, if the MLB was fun, they'd let him go pick up the bats in between. <laughs> batters. All right, that's all for now. For all of us here at KSAT 12, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. And all new instant replay starts right now. I think Oxnard, I think uh, added practices in this weather. Let's crank it up and let's get going. I absolutely love this time of year. 
I like the shoulders. What you got? Go, 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 go. Really, there you go. I swear to God. Wait, wait, wait. This is the work that you need. It is new and there's a freshness that is new season. And ready to rock together. Third and ten. our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp coming to you tonight from the Channel Islands Harbor Marina here in Oxnard, California. This wraps up two weeks of our coverage of the Cowboys training camp. They still have three days left in camp, but they depart for Denver on Wednesday. We'll have shared workouts with the Broncos until they stage their first preseason game of the year when they face the Broncos in Denver on Saturday night. But first, it's time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys don't seem to be too concerned with the depth of wide receiver even after the series injury to veteran James Washington the first day of pads last week when he broke a bone in his foot and could be out for up to the next 10 weeks. It gives others a chance to work in reps, including Ezekiel Elliott out of the backfield and rookie Jalen Tolbert, who's trying to make the starting lineup in his first season in the NFL with Michael Gallup not expected back until late September and Dennis Houston out of Warren High School. So what has been the most difficult for these young receivers going forward? The game time preparation is going to be probably the most difficult because you never know what to expect. You don't really know how fast the game is. Practice doesn't really do too much, like as far as feeling what a game feels like. And I just feel like the preparation for a game is going to be the hardest thing, but, and then actually going out there and playing. But, I mean, right now, you just got to figure it out. Yeah, meantime, Cowboys star running back Ezekiel Elliott is coming off a knee injury that nagged him the last three months of the season. And as it turned out, was a partially torn posterior cruciate ligament, which he says he never considered surgery on. He is wearing a brace during practices to keep it warm, and we do see him working with trainers on the resistance bands before workouts ramp up. But is there any extra pregame preparation he has to think about now? I really don't don't think about it uh, much. Uh, I mean, yeah, with my PT, you know, we're working on it. We're working on, you know, the quad strength and, you know, activating that and just uh, making sure everything's aligned and and uh, well, well ordered and get it going. But uh, I'll say there's not anything uh, extra that I do during warm or anything uh, to get it ready. All right, now for the defensive side of the ball and their star linebacker slash defensive end, Micah Parsons coming off a rookie season that was unbelievable. 13 sacks, three forced fumbles that led him to being named the NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Year. But now that he's getting ready to enter year two, what drives him to be even better? The thing that gives me driver is just my competitive nature. I mean, you look at all the great players like MJ, you look at LeBron, Kobe, they always have this drive to do something bigger than what's ever done before. And, uh, you know, bringing a Super Bowl, is where my mind's at, and that was drives me. And my personal, of what I want to do for my family and this team and what I know I can accomplish for my abilities, that's what drives me. And, you know, we talk about all the time about so much talent of youth and older kids that just go to waste, and I don't want this to go to waste, and I just want to be an example. That's what drives me for my city and for my family. All right, let's take a look at the Cowboys' schedule this week. They have a practice tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, a little earlier on Wednesday with the mock game. Then they depart for Denver at 3 p.m. San Antonio time. Thursday, they have a noon practice with the Broncos. Friday is a player's day off. And Saturday, their preseason opener against Denver in Denver. That will be at 8 p.m. San Antonio time. All right, we can hardly wait for our one-on-one -on -one interview with Dak Prescott that's coming up in just a matter of minutes. Let's take you live from the Channel Islands Harbor Marina here in Oxnard. Back to our K at 12 Studios in downtown San Antonio. That's where we find our Andrew Seeley who's going to get us all caught up on the Texans training camp. Hey there, Andrew. Hey, Greg. Thanks a lot. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans had one last day of padded practice this afternoon before taking tomorrow off. The goal for the season is simple. Get more physical. The Texans were one of the worst run defenses in the entire NFL last year, but they're hoping to shore up that weakness by drafting rookie linebacker Christian Harris out of Alabama. The third round pick missed Saturday's practice with a minor hamstring injury, but he's been impressing teammates like fellow linebacker Garrett Wallow all through training camp. 
very smart and intelligent uh, as a young guy. Um, we're always having talks. Um, it's, it's crazy because sometimes, you know, he leans on me uh, for advice, and I'm like, man, that was just that was the same last year, right? And I'm still the same, right? I'm always trying to learn from somebody, but he's also trying to learn from me now. So um, just being able to help him any way I can has been important. On the other side of the ball, tight end Farrell Brown is back for his third season in Houston. Last year, Brown started 12 games but only caught 23 passes for 171 yards and zero touchdowns. He's traditionally been more effective in the run game, but this year he decided to make a change to get leaner to help the passing attack. I always did like Pilates and stuff like that, but uh, I mean, I was, a fat, I was a fat guy last year. Uh, one of the linemen just was like... Uh, He's like, I'm proud of you, man. You was a, uh, you was a uh, big uh, old line tight end last year. Now you're out there catching balls. I was like, yeah. I told him I got a new financial advisor, and they told me that the blocking. This year, so we got to catch a lot more balls. So uh, a lot of that went into it. And, uh, He's just, there's something about him, you know, so freaking serpent. Reynolds caught 19 passes for 306 yards in seven games with the Lions last year. Now let's send it back to our very own praying mantis and spider of death in Oxnard, Greg Simmons. <laughs> I like that spider of death. All right, it's time now for tonight's instant replay. Poll question here. What is the biggest concern in Cowboys camp? A, teaming Elliott and Pollard together in the backfield, wide receiver, kicking game, offensive line. Vote now. We have the results of the end of our broadcast tonight. When we come back to the Cowboys training camp coverage here in California, it's time to go one-on-one -on -one with Dak Prescott. Um, yeah, I think it's good to good to do that. I'll be 29, 29th golden golden birthday, so I'm uh, planning for this to be the golden year. So. All right, so this is going to be the golden year for Dak Prescott. What does he mean by that? What does he think of the wide receivers after losing one, a veteran, by the way, to injury? What is his opinion of a pair of San Antonio talents making a name for themselves at camp? Find out as we go one-on-one -on -one with Cowboys starting quarterback Dak Prescott. Back at home, San Antonio FC loses a rare road game, and Fernando Tatis Jr. returns to the Wolf. And we're just weeks away from the KSAP Pigskin Classic. We're going to get you ready for the triple header in the Alamo Dome. Not only have high school football practices started, so have high school volleyball workouts when Instant Replay continues live from San Antonio and Oxnard next.